The top stories tonight in Y News. The Philippines is projected to have more than 1 million COVID-19 cases before the end of April. We'll start implementing this week a triad system for COVID-19 patients. The Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, or PhilHealth, expedites the release of its policy guidelines for admission of COVID-19 patients. The Philippine National Police implements a major revamp among its senior officials. A U.S. Navy destroyer sunk during World War II and lying below a sea level off the Philippines has been reached in the world's deepest shipwreck dive. And the Members Church of God International, or MCGI, kicks off a week-long feeding program and free store in remembrance of Brother Eli Soriano's life and works. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Quezon Avenue in Quezon City. Today is Monday, April 5, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. The UP Octa research team is projecting that COVID-19 cases in the Philippines may breach to 1 million before the end of the month, despite the slight downtrend of COVID-19 cases in the national capital region. Joe Anano tells us why. From the previous 1.9 reproduction number of COVID-19 cases in the national capital region, based on the recent report of the Okta Research Group, it slightly slowed down to 1.6 after a week of implementing the enhanced community quarantine in Metro Manila, Cavite, Rizal, Bulacan, and Laguna. This is prior to the one-week GCQ bubble within the NCR+, Plus, which also contributed in slowing down the reproduction number of COVID-19 cases. The experts explained that they also observe a decrease in the growth rate of COVID cases. From the previous 60% increase in new daily cases, it was lowered to 20% after a week of implementing the ECQ. The young trend is uh, ano, slowing down. Uh, or if ano, kung compare natin kanyari yung ano yung growth rate, uh, one week growth rate, nag decrease ra from 60% increase to 20%. Ang ibig sabihin yan, uh, yung number of new cases natin this week, mga 5,500, it's only a 20% increase from last week. Sa NCR yun, yung 5,500. So uh, nag improve siya, and hopefully with the ano, um, additional one week of ECQ. Uh, we can reduce further the reproduction number sana mapababa natin to 1 or close to 1. However, Okta clarifies that it is too early to say if we will be able to reach the target of the lowest reproduction number following another week of ECQ in the NCR Plus bubble. The research group also cited that the critical healthcare utilization may still last for several weeks. Right now, I don't see the hospital utilization uh, being eased a bit, no? Konti pa siguro mag-extract pa tayo na medyo nasa critical level pa yung hospital natin perhaps the middle of this week until the end of this week. Despite of observing a slight downtrend in COVID's reproduction number, Okta still projects that daily new COVID-19 cases could still reach to 11,000 to 12,000. Yung 1 million total cases, um, that will be breached before the end of April based on the uh, projections that we're seeing. Based on Okta's recent monitoring report, the trends in several cities have started to slow down in the past week such as Manila, Paranaque, Marikina, Davotas, Pasay, and Makati. However, a rapid increase of COVID cases was seen in the cities of Mandaluyo, Las Piñas, and San Juan. The Okta Research Group is hoping that after the ECQ extension, the reproduction number will be lowered to 1.3 to 1.2 within the NCR Plus bubble. Joan Nano UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
With a rising number of COVID-19 cases, many hospitals are now in full capacity, forcing some COVID-19 patients to hop from one hospital to another. While for some patients, all they can wait, all they can do is wait in temporary tents and emergency rooms for admission, praying that there would be available beds for them any minute soon. And what made matters worse are the reports of exclusion of hospital tents from PhilHealth coverage and the alleged overcharging of some hospitals. The state health insurer, the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth, clarified that COVID-19 patients waiting in tents who have received services from the hospital are covered by the inpatient care COVID-19 package. Huwag mag-alala yung mga pasyente na pagkaman sila ay nasa tent, pero sila nga po ay, uh, uh, kumbaga, sila ay uh, inaasikaso na, no? ginagamot na, binibigyan na ng mga serbisyo. As part of inpatient care, <clears throat> sila po ay uh, mababayaran. O kahit kung yan ay nangyari last week o nangyari the last two weeks, uh, sila ay babayaran ng PhilHealth. No? Kailangan lamang na i-file yung claim sa ospital. PhilHealth spokesperson Ray Balenya says they are expediting the policy review for the release of enhanced guidelines to address the situation. Last week, several senators urged PhilHealth to come up with a standard policy to cover patients staying in hospital tents while waiting for admission. The senators noted that PhilHealth has a social and moral obligation to serve the needs of its members and also reminded the state insurer of their role in implementing the university universal health care law. Senator Amy Marcos also joined her colleague's call for PhilHealth to fast-track the policy review and release of guidelines. Kaya nga nasa tent eh, kasi nagkulang tayo. Tapos pagkakaitan pa yung coverage, pambihirang buhay to. Sobra naman yun. Meanwhile, PhilHealth also, also assured that it is looking into the reported 1,000 per hour charge of some hospitals to those waiting in hospital tents. Sa ngayon, hindi ako makapagbigay ng uh, anumang detalye, pero maliwanag yun. No? May kapangyarihan ng PhilHealth na kapag uh, meron talagang uh, dahilan para uh, maniwala tayo na sila ay may violation ng ating mga rules no? at ng batas, sila ay sasampahan ng kaukulang kaso. House Committee on Ways and Means Chairperson Representative Joey Salceda also warned hospitals there are overcharging patients, saying that their managers can be subpoenaed by his committee for an investigation for what he calls abusive medical billing practices. Meanwhile, hospitals in Metro Manila are now congested as cases of COVID-19 continue to spike. With this, the government is now setting up more facilities, including a triad system for local government units. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Department of Health says one reason why hospitals keep getting full capacity, because people directly go to hospitals for treatment. This in spite of the installed hotlines for consultation. Those who are exposed to COVID-19 patients, asymptomatic or with mild symptoms, prefer to be admitted immediately in hospitals out of fear and panic. According to DOH spokesperson under Secretary Maria Rosari Vergere, they have been setting up additional isolation facilities to transfer those who are asymptomatic and those with mild symptoms. The DOH targets to start hospital decongestion this week. Pag matanggal lang natin yung mga mild na symptomatic, luluwag, ng, uh, luluwag ang ating mga ospital at magkakaroon tayo ng enough space for the patients who really need uh, hospitals the most. So kaya iyan yung pinag-iibayuhan natin gawin sa ngayon. No? If we can remove the mild na symptomatics from the hospitals, we can have at least additional 30 to 40 percent of beds available. The Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 has also approved the use of schools as quarantine facilities. Eight modular hospitals in National Capital Region will also be opened for COVID-19 patients who still need hospital care. The DOH has also found four hotels where healthcare workers who have mild and asymptomatic COVID-19 infection will be brought. So this is a layer that we are trying to include into the structure. Puputuli natin yung structure na from the home or the LGU straight to the hospital. No? So yun po yung nangyayari sa atin ngayon. Kaya nagkaroon tayo ng challenge na talagang punong-punong ang mga ER, punong-punong ang ating mga ospital. 
Another solution to prevent the overwhelming of hospitals is the setting up of triage areas in LGUs. According to Undersecretary Vergere, the triage system will properly designate a patient, whether he or she be brought to a hospital or in an isolation or quarantine facility. They remove the negative uh, individual or household member at yun ang inilalagay natin sa quarantine facility para lang magkaroon tayo ng mas efficient na manner of responding and that is acceptable. LGUs will also have an ambulance on standby for proper coordination with the One Hospital Command to know which hospital's patient should be brought. Meanwhile, the DOH allows reverse isolation of LGUs where COVID-19 transmission is fast. With this, all those who are positive of COVID-19 will be left at home and those who are not infected will be extracted and will be brought to quarantine facilities. They remove the negative uh, individual or household member at yun ang inilalagay natin sa quarantine facility para lang magkaroon tayo ng mas efficient na manner of responding and that is acceptable. The DOH adds LGU should just make sure that those that will be brought to quarantine facilities should have separate rooms apart from other groups or families to prevent any possible transmission of diseases or virus. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Philippine Orthopedic Center continues its vaccination program despite the rise of COVID-19 cases among its personnel. Ray Pelayo reports why. Around 81% of the 1,400 employees of the Philippine Orthopedic Center has already took been vaccinated against COVID-19. POC officer in charge, Dr. Michael Benzon, said that they target to finish the vaccination by the end of April. The hospital now has 146 active COVID-19 cases among its employees wherein more than 70 are doctors and nurses. Despite this, the hospital's operation is still manageable according to Dr. Benzon. We na kami sa middle of April to third week of April na hindi naman talaga malaking uh, problema sa ating positive uh, the hospital official noted that none of the infected employees are in critical condition but they are now undergoing home quarantine. The Department of Health said they are now addressing the concerns of the hospital including additional health and safety gears and quarantine facilities. So, so we are still awaiting kung ano pa yung kung sino pa ang kailangan ng admission uh, sa mga hotel facilities natin at meron na tayong nakahanda para sa kanila. The specialty hospital's outpatient department is temporarily closed and elective surgeries were suspended. However, their employees will continue to treat patients with urgent orthopedic needs. Sa dami ng mga pasyente na dumarating sa outpatient, between 350 to 450 patients a day, uh, naisip namin para hindi na kumalas, lalo na uh, na tumataas yung positivity rate sa Manila. Nag-design po kami na ipatigil mo na yung outpatient. For non-emergency cases, the public can now consult online through the POC Orthopedic Surgery OPD Appointments Facebook page. Ray Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Health or DOH reported an additional 8,355 new cases today which brought the nationwide tally of confirmed cases to 803,000 398. The new cases has also increased the number of active COVID-19 cases in the Philippines to 143,726. On the other hand, 10 new deaths related to COVID-19 were reported on Monday, making the country's death count reach 13,435. Meanwhile, the DOH said 145 more patients have recovered from the dreaded disease pushing the nationwide tally of recoveries to 646,237. 
Malacanang revealed that an application for the compassionate use of antiparasitic drug ivermectin as treatment for COVID-19 has been submitted before the Food and Drug Administration. The palace made the clarification after reports that President Rodrigo Duterte agreed to use the drug on COVID-19 patients. Currently, ivermectin is only approved for veterinary use to prevent heartworm disease in animals. It is also a drug for parasite infestation such as head lice and scabies. Report po ni uh, Yusek Domingo, yung Director General ng ating FDA, na meron na po nag-apply ngayon no, for compassionate use ng ivermectin. So antayin na lang po natin ang aksyon ng uh, FDA sa mga naisang pa ng uh, aplikasyon for ivermectin. The Department of Foreign Affairs deplores the recent statement of the Chinese Embassy in Manila for calling Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana unprofessional. This after the official demanded for China to immediately withdraw its vessels that are in the vicinity of Julian Felipe Reef and in the Philippines' maritime zones. Meanwhile, Malacanang believes that the issue can still be resolved by both countries peacefully. Rosa Licos explains why. The Department of Foreign Affairs strongly deplores the statement made by the Chinese Embassy in the Philippines. DFA says it contained blatant falsehoods and attempted to promote false narratives of China's expansive and illegitimate claims in the West Philippine Sea. The two-page statement also denounces the Embassy's attempt to impugn Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana for calling him unprofessional when the latter called for the prompt withdrawal of the Chinese vessels in Julian Felipe Reef. DFA reminds the Chinese embassy officials that they are guests of the Philippine government and guests must at all times observe protocol and accord respect to the Philippine government officials. Meanwhile, Malacanang reiterated the position of President Rodrigo Duterte that the Philippines will not sacrifice any of its national territory or even the areas covered by our exclusive economic zone, particularly in the West Philippine or South China Sea. However, the official also said that the government will not use violence of action to defend our territory. Ang position po ng presidente, uh, paninindigan natin ang karapatan pero hindi po ito isang bagay para tayo po ay gumamit ng dahas. Uh, kampante po ang ating presidente na dahil nga po meron tayong malapit na pagkakaibigan, mariresolve ba itong hidwaan na ito? Secretary Roque still believes the recent issue between the Philippines and China can be resolved peacefully. Wala naman pong world war. No? Uh, malinaw po ang sinasabi ng presidente, uh, meron po tayong uh, malapit na pagkakaibigan. Hindi po dahilan itong mga fishing vessels para tayo po ay uh, magkagera and we will resolve this peacefully. Rosa Licoz, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Malacanang identifies key features in the new water concession deal between the government and Manila Water. Rosa Licoz, report. The government through the Manila Water and Metropolitan Water Works and Sewerage System or MWSS and Manila Water have signed a new water concession deal. Malacanang bears the key features of the agreement, particularly the removal of government non-interference clauses which means government will no longer be liable when fulfilling its regulatory functions to protect the consumer. The deal also recognizes Manila Water as a public utility which makes it more accountable to the government and the public. Provisions which unduly compromise medium and long-term government liabilities have been also removed. The palace reiterates that the newly signed agreement has advantages to the consumer which include corporate income tax cannot be charged to the consumer. Tariff freeze will also be effective until December 1, 2022. Also, the tariff adjustment for inflation will only be two-thirds of the consumer price index and the foreign currency differential adjustment have been removed. Uh, dahil po dito sa bagong uh, concession agreement, revised concession agreement sa Manila uh, Water, e eh, protektado rin po ang gobyerno at ang ating mga consumers. Meanwhile, the government will also renegotiate with another water concessionaire giant or Manila Water Services for a new concessionaire deal. President Rodrigo Duterte ordered the DOJ in 2019 to review the 1997 water concession agreements following the water crisis. 
Rosa Licoz, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Several Metro Manila mayors have decided to give cash assistance to low-income residents affected by the implementation of the Enhanced Community Quarantine. Janet Ingente reports why. Alejandro Pascual Jr., a former construction worker, is just waiting to receive help from the government after losing his job following the re-implementation of the Enhanced Community Quarantine in Metro Manila. A single parent with four children, Pascual preferred to receive cash aid from the government. Cash na lang kayo sa grocery. Kasi mas ma-separate ko kasi kung ano mga gagastos. Pero kung sa grocery naman, kukulangin talaga. Mas maganda yung cash talaga siya. Kasi yung katulad ng pambayad ng kuryente, tubig, tapos sa uh, gamot, kung sakasakaling makakaroon ng ganito, gamot ang bibiling ko kasi. Larry Delgara, a construction worker, also wants cash aid so they can pay their monthly bills after losing his job. Paminsan-minsan na alak extra, eh, nawawalan pa rin tayo ng tabaho. Mas maganda para sa akin, kasta lang po. Para po may gusto mang kami bilhin, eh, mabibili namin. Kasi mga job ang mimigay din naman na ano, karamihan ng dilata. The government will be giving at least 1,000 pesos worth of aid per person, but not more than 4,000 pesos per low-income family. For other affected families like Ana Lima Noloto, the 1,000 cash aid is not enough for their big family. Para sa akin, sa kagaya kong limang anak, kulang. Kulang talaga. Sa mahal ng bilihin natin ngayon, kulang na kulang talaga. Ngayon, ECQ, mahirap talaga. Lalo na sa kagaya kong manikurista lang. Local government units that will distribute cash assistance to their constituents are the cities of San Juan, Marikina, Manila, Navotas, Mandaluyong, and Valenzuela. Most of the mayors prefer cash aid to allow low-income residents to purchase priority goods for their families. LGUs can choose the form of aid cash or in-kind they will give to lockdown hit residents. The number of beneficiaries will be based also on the figures of the Department of Social Welfare and Development and the National Economic and Development Authority. Janice Inhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. A migration expert believes that the Philippine government should clarify the latest travel restrictions of the United Kingdom that bans the entry of foreigners starting April 9. Nel Maribohok explains why. British Ambassador to the Philippines Daniel Proust announced over the weekend the inclusion of the Philippines in the United Kingdom's red list. International visitors who have departed from or traveled through red list countries in the preceding 10 days are refused entry into England. Countries on the list include Brazil and South Africa, where two of the most concerning virus variants have been identified. However, there are exemptions. This means that you cannot enter the UK from the Philippines unless you are a British or Irish national, or if you are a third country national, including Filipino, who has residence rights in the UK. This measure, which will begin on April 9, aims to reduce the risk posed by new COVID-19 variants. But migration expert Emmanuel Gaslani said the UK's latest travel ban should be clarified first as this may delay the deployment of nurses. As a PO, we should now clarify with the Christian machine what if the red list includes uh, Filipino nurses with work permits. Mm -hmm. and Vice versa, the British Embassy should come up with a clarification upon the query of the UA if included yung nurses natin sa red list because that's very damaging to the nurses. The Philippines is one of the largest suppliers of nurses to the UK with over 35,000 Filipino healthcare workers. But Malacanang seems not worried over the travel restrictions as they have different opinion on the new measures. Matagal na rin naman natin na uh, hindi pinapapasok o oh, yung mga galing din sa UK at uh, ito naman po ay panandaliang uh, measure. No? So gaya ng uh, hindi natin pagpasok sa mga pasahero galing sa UK, eh, hindi naman po tayo pinagbabawal. Ah. Ang ibig sabihin lang ng rate is uh, 
uh, restriction ng UK, kinakailangan mag-hotel quarantine po yung mga Pilipino na pupunta po sa UK. Yun po yung aking pagkakaintindi. So kung ano po yung ginagawa natin sa mga dayuhan, yun din po ang re-require ngayon ng UK. The Philippine Overseas Employment Administration has yet to comment on the issue. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Malacanang hopes that newly appointed Chief Justice Alexander Gasmundo will uphold reform during his stint in the High Court. Dante Amento reports live. Yes, Dante. Yes, Harleen, good evening. The Malacanang Palace congratulates newly appointed Supreme Court Chief Justice Alexander Gismondo. C.J. Gismondo becomes the fourth Chief Justice appointed by President Rodrigo Duterte. He replaces former Chief Justice Diosdado Peralta, who made an early retirement last March 27th. Gismondo formally took his oath this afternoon as the 27th Chief Magistrate of the country's High Court before Senior Associate Justice Estela Perlas Bernabe. The palace hopes that C.J. Gismondo will uphold the rule of law and reforms in the judiciary. Hindi na po bago si Chief Justice Esmundo sa hudikatura na kanyang pinagsilbihan ng maraming taon bilang Associate Justice ng Katastaasang Hukuman at bilang Associate Justice po ng Sandigan Bayan. Dahil dito, tiwala kami na ipagpapatuloy ng bagong punong maestrado na i-uphold ang judicial excellence at independence. During his recent public interview by the Judicial and Bar Council or JBC, Gismundo said that there should be proper review on the search warrants and probable cause must be considered before issuance by court judges. Gismundo worked as an assistant solicitor general before his appointment at the Sandigan Bayan in 2005. He joined the Supreme Court as the 64th magistrate in 2017. He was one of those who voted to oust former Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. He also conquered the uh, arrest of detained Senator Leila de Lima. Harlina Chief Justice Gismundo will lead the judiciary until his mandatory retirement in November 2026. And that's the latest. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live. The Department of Health has sought the help of the World Health Organization to tackle the rising cases of COVID-19 in the Philippines amid the presence of more contagious variants. Aiko Miguel explains why. With the aim to further study the effects of COVID-19 variants now present in the Philippines, as well as the COVID-19 situation in the country, the Health Department has met with an expert from World Health Organization who arrived in the country last week. The twice-a-week meeting will also tackle measures to prevent further transmission of the more transmissible COVID-19 variants in the country. We asked for their help. Nakipag-usap tayo sa WHO dahil gusto natin mas maintindihan pa kung ano yung epekto nitong variants, ano yung level of transmission dito sa ating bansa when it comes to the variants. At saka gusto natin makaroon ng guidance or technical assistance from WHO on how we can better manage no? na meron na nga tayong ganitong variants dito sa ating bansa. The DOH has also been asking for assistance on how to strengthen the country's genomic biosurveillance to determine if there are new COVID-19 variants in the Philippines as well as the scope of infection. Another thing na pinag-uusapan natin with them is how to go through yung proper na genomic biosurveillance. Tasabihin niya sa atin kung ano yung ano pa ang kailangan natin gawin para ma-improve yung pagsasample natin at makita natin yung totoong picture dito sa ating bansa. Currently, only 750 samples can be sequenced in a week, possibly within today or tomorrow. The Philippine Genome Center will issue results of sequenced samples and report how many new COVID-19 variant cases there are in the country. The machine used in the Philippine Genome Center was contaminated last week, so there has been preventive maintenance work. 
based on the DOH report last March 20, 2021. There are 223 cases of B.1.1.7 COVID-19 variant of concern in the country, 152 cases of B.1.351 COVID-19 variant of concern, and 104 P.3 variant under investigation in the Philippines. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Good evening. For the news abroad, authorities are conducting an investigation that caused Taiwan's worst rail accident in decades and killing at least 50 people. This report explains why. Li Yi Shang, a 49-year-old construction site manager, said he was deeply remorseful and wanted to give his most sincere apologies. His flatbed lorry was parked on an embankment but slipped down, causing the train to derail on Friday near the city of Hualien. At least 50 people were killed and more than 200 injured in the crash. Investigators say CCTV footage from the front carriage showed the train driver had only 6.9 seconds to respond and the train was only 250 meters away from the lorry. Not enough time or distance for the driver to stop and avoid the collision. The probe is now looking into whether Mr. Lee failed to set the emergency brake or whether there was a mechanical failure in his vehicle. He was questioned over the weekend by prosecutors and released on bail but was taken back into custody because he was deemed a flight risk and had a previous conviction. Mr. Lee is part of a team who regularly inspect Taiwan's mountainous eastern train line for landslides and other risks and was also thought to be the flatbed's operator. The eight-carriage train was packed with people traveling to celebrate a long weekend holiday from the capital Taipei to Taitung when it hit the flatbed and crashed inside a tunnel north of Hualien. Many of the nearly 500 passengers on board may have been standing because the train was so full. Some survivors lost their whole families, AFP reports, and Taiwan declared three days of national mourning. Investigators have been going through the train's recording devices and CCTV footage from the front carriage. Crews are still slowly and carefully removing the train wreck from the tunnel and fear that more bodies could be found. There have been mounting questions over how full the train was and why there were no barricades on that section of the track. These lead to Taiwan's Transport Minister Lin Xiaolong offering his resignation on Sunday. The government has not accepted his resignation, however, and said he should stay in the position until the investigation was complete. Elsie Marcos, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Authorities of Jordan are denying reports that its former crown prince has been detained as security forces begin investigation at the prince's small palace. Mavian Dog will give us the details live. Yes, Maeve? LC Jordan's former Crown Prince Hamza said in a videotaped statement passed to the BBC by his lawyer that he has been under house arrest, following reports of the military on Saturday denying the allegation. Jordan's military claims instead that the prince had been warned to stop activities that threatened the country's security and stability and that it was part of a broader investigation involving the detainment of a former minister, a junior member of the royal family, and others who were unnamed. According to Foreign Minister Ayman Safadi, the investigation showed interferences and communications with foreign parties around the right timing to destabilize Jordan. But King Abdullah II deemed it best to speak to, to speak to Prince Hamza directly and deal with it within the family. Meanwhile, Prince Hamza insists he was not part of any conspiracy after being informed that he was being punished for being part of meetings wherein the king had been criticized. In the recording, the prince describes his situation, stating that he was not allowed to go out to communicate or meet with people due to his alleged involvement in these meetings and that his security, internet, and phone lines have been cut. The prince further accuses authorities of corruption, harassment, and incompetence that have been prevalent in the governing structure for the last 15 to 20 years and refuses to be responsible for this breakdown in governance. 
Army Chief Yosef Fanati said an investigation is underway and results will be disclosed to the public in a transparent and clear form. Elsie? Thank you, Mavian Dog, reporting live from Queensland, Australia. A U.S. Navy destroyer that sunk during World War II and lying nearly 6,500 meters below sea level off the coast of the Philippines has been reached in the world's deepest shipwreck dive. Marvi Delphine will give us the details live. Yes, Marvi? LCA Submersible, piloted by Kaladin Oceanic, has fully mapped the wreckage of the 115-meter-long USS Johnston off the coast of Samar Island. It took several dives to relocate the wreck, but the exploration team, which comprised Vic Victor Viscovo, along with engineer Shane Eigler and naval historian Park Stevenson, were able to film, photograph, and survey the site. They managed to find the bow, bridge, and midsection intact, with the hull number 557 still visible. The ship was sunk on October 25, 1944, during the Battle of Leyte Gulf, as U.S. forces fought to liberate the Philippines from Japanese occupation. Vescovo said that the destroyer was in good condition, apart from the damage it sustained from the fierce battle with the largest warship ever constructed, the Imperial Japanese Navy battleship Yamato. According to U.S. Navy records, only 141 of its 327 crew survived. No human remains or clothing were found during the expedition, and the team laid wreaths before and after the dives as respect to the crew. The team has turned over to the U.S. Navy their collected sonar data, imagery, and field notes, and they are now working with other naval historians in the hope of shedding more light on the World War II battle. Elsie? All right, Marvi, thank you for that report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. In other news, the Philippine National Police, or PNP, conducts a major revamp among its senior officials. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. Several PNP generals are set to retire from their service. That is why the PNP leadership implemented a major reshuffle among its senior officials. PNP spokesperson Police Brigadier General Ildebrandi Osana says, Those who are set to retire this month of April and next month are now placed on a non-duty status or NDS. This is to give way for the processing of their retirement papers. Major General Emmanuel Luis Likup, Directorate for Comptrollership Head, was placed on a non-duty status and was transferred to the office of the Chief PNP or OCPNP ahead of his retirement on Friday, April 9. Replacing Lee Coop is Brigadier General Rodolfo Azurin Jr. from the Directorate for Information and Communication Technology Management. His post will be occupied by Brigadier General Alexander Sampaga who came from the office of the Chief PNP. Brigadier General Ronald Lee, the commander of the PNP Drug Enforcement Group or PDEG, was designated as the Regional Director of the Police Regional Office Cordillera, replacing Brigadier General Arwin Pagkalinawan, who was assigned to the Police Holding and Accounting Unit under the Directorate for Police Records and Management or PHAO DPRM. Brigadier General Ramos Medina will take over the top post of the PDEG that will be vacated by Lee. Also transferred to PHAO DPRM is Police Brigadier General Samuel Rodriguez from Police Regional Office Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. Rodriguez, who is set to retire also this month, will be replaced by Brigadier General Eden Ugale, who is from the office of the Chief PNP. The reshuffle will be effective on April 5. Meanwhile, other officials who are set to retire are BNP Deputy Chief for Operations, Police Lieutenant General Cesar Hawthorne Binag, who will retire on April 24. BNP Spokesperson, Police Brigadier General Ilde Brandi Osana, is set to retire on April 20. On May 8, PNP Chief, Police General Debold Sinas, 
will also reach the mandatory retirement age of 56 for uniformed personnel. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news. April 5, 2021. I am Hari Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Ani Locastro III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.